Hello everybody and welcome to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I have a very special first-hand account. Let's go back to July 1863, and the Army of the Potomac has just engaged and finally defeated Robert E. Lee's Army in Northern Virginia at Gettysburg. The new commander of that Union Army was George Meade. He was a topographical engineer for the Army and a graduate of the West Point Military Academy. He was an intelligent man and the general who commanded the Army of the Potomac until the end of the war. Lincoln had sifted through multiple generals including McDowell, McClellan, Burnside, and Hooker before he finally landed on Meade. This account is Meade's official report on what happened at the Battle of Gettysburg. On reaching that place on July 1st, General Reynolds found Buford's cavalry warmly engaged with the enemy who had deployed his infantry through the mountains on the Cash Town Road, but was being held in check in the most gallant manner by Buford's cavalry. Major General Reynolds immediately moved around the town of Gettysburg and advanced on the Cash Town Road and without a moment's hesitation, deployed his advanced division and attacked the enemy at the same time, sending orders for the 11th Corps, General Howard, to advance as promptly as possible. Soon after making his disposition for the attack, Major General Reynolds fell mortally wounded the command of the 1st Corps devolving on Major General Doubleday, and the command of the field on Major General Howard, who arrived about this time 11.30 a.m., with the 11th Corps then commanded by Major General Schurz. Major General Howard pushed forward two divisions of the 11th Corps to the support of the 1st Corps, now warmly engaged with the enemy on the ridge to the north of town, and posted his 3rd Division with three batteries of artillery on the cemetery ridge on the south side of town. Up to this time, the battle had been with the forces of the enemy deploying from the mountains on the Cash Town Road known to be Hill's Corps. In the early part of the action, success was on our side. Wadsworth's division of the 1st Corps had driven the enemy back some distance, capturing numerous prisoners, among them General Archer of the Confederate Army. The arrival of the reinforcements for the enemy on the Cash Town Road and the junction of Ewell's Corps come on the York and Harrisburg Roads, which occurred between 1 and 2 p.m., enabled the enemy to bring vastly superior forces against both the 1st and 11th Corps. Outflanking our line of battle and pressing it so severely that about 4 p.m. Major General Howard deemed it prudent to withdraw these two corps to the cemetery ridge on the south side of town, which operation was successfully accomplished, not however without considerable loss in prisoners arising from the confusion incident to portions of both corps passing through town and the men getting confused in the streets. About the time of his withdrawal, Major General Hancock arrived, whom I had dispatched to represent me on the field on hearing of the death of General Reynolds. In conjunction with Major General Howard, General Hancock proceeded to post the troops on Cemetery Ridge and to repel any attack that the enemy made on our right flank. This attack was not, however, very vigorous, and the enemy, seeing the strength of the position occupied, seemed to be satisfied with the success he had accomplished desisting from any further attack this day. About 7 p.m., Major General Slocum and Sickles, with the 12th and part of the 3rd, reached the ground and took post on the right and left of the troops previously posted. Being satisfied from the reports received from the field that it was the intention of the enemy to support with his whole army the attack already made, and the reports from Major Generals Hancock and Howard on the character of the position being favorable, I determined to give the battle at this point and early in the evening of the 1st, issued orders to all Corps commanders to concentrate at Gettysburg, directing all trains to be sent to the rear at Westminster. At 10 p.m. of the 1st, I broke up my headquarters, which until then had been at Tawny Town, and proceeded to the field, arriving there at 1 a.m. of the 2nd. So soon as it was light, I proceeded to inspect the position occupied, and made arrangements for posting the several Corps as they should reach the ground. By 7 a.m., the 2nd and 5th Corps, with the rest of the 3rd, had reached the ground and were posted as follows. The 11th Corps retained its position on Cemetery Ridge, just opposite the town. The 1st Corps was posted on the right of the 11th, on an elevated knoll connecting with a ridge extending to the south and east, on which the 12th Corps was placed. The right of the 12th Corps, resting on a small stream at a point where it crossed the Baltimore Pike, and which formed on the right flank of the 12th, something of an obstacle. The cemetery ridge extended in a westerly southerly direction, gradually diminishing the elevation until it came to a very prominent ridge called Round Top, running east and west. 
The second and third corps were directed to occupy the continuation of the cemetery ridge on the left of the 11th corps. The 5th corps, pending the arrival of the 6th, was held in reserve. While these dispositions were being made, the enemy was massing his troops on an exterior ridge, distant from the line occupied by us one and one and a half miles. At 2 p.m. the 6th Corps arrived, after a march of 32 miles, accomplished from 9 p.m. the day previous. On its arrival, being reported, I immediately directed the 5th Corps to move over to our extreme left, and the 6th to occupy its place as a reserve for the right. About 3 p.m. I rode out to the extreme left to await the arrival of the 5th Corps and to post it when I found that Major General Sickles, commanding the 3rd Corps, not fully comprehending the instructions in regard to the position to be occupied and had advanced or rather was in the act of advancing his corps some half a mile or three quarters of a mile in front of the line of the 2nd Corps on the prolongation of which I was designed his corps should rest. Having found Major General Sickles, I was explaining to him that he was too far in advance and discussing with him the propriety of withdrawing when the enemy opened on him with several batteries in his front and on his flank and immediately brought forward columns of infantry and made it a most vigorous assault. The Third Corps sustained the shock most heroically. Troops from the Second Corps were immediately sent by General Hancock to cover the right flank of the Third Corps and soon after the assault commenced the 5th Corps most fortunately arrived and took position on the left of the 3rd, immediately sending a force to occupy the Round Top Ridge, where a most furious contest was maintained, the enemy making desperate but unsuccessful efforts to secure it. Notwithstanding the stubborn resistance of the 3rd Corps under Major General Burney, Major General Sickles having been wounded earlier in the action, the superiority of numbers of the enemy enabling him to outflank the Corps in its advanced position, General Burney was compelled to fall back and reform behind the line originally designed to be held. In the meantime, perceiving the great exertions of the enemy, the 6th Corps, Major General Sedgwick, and part of the 1st Corps, to the command of which I had assigned Major General Newton, particularly Lockwood's Maryland Brigade, together with detachments from the 2nd Corps, were all brought up at different periods and succeeded together with the gallant resistance of the 5th Corps in checking and finally repulsing the assault of the enemy who retired in confusion and disorder about sunset, and ceased any further efforts on the extreme left. An assault was, however, made about 8 p.m. on the 11th Corps from the left of town, which was repelled with assistance of troops from the 2nd and 1st Corps. During the heavy assault upon our extreme left, portions of the 12th Corps were sent as reinforcements. During the absence, the line of the extreme right was held by a very much reduced force. This was taken advantage of by the enemy, who during the absence of General Geary's division of the 12th Corps advanced and occupied a part of his line. On the morning of the 3rd, General Geary, having returned during the night, attacked at early dawn the enemy and succeeded in driving him back and reoccupying his former position. A spirited contest was, however, maintained all the morning along this part of the line. General Geary, reinforced by Wheaton's Brigade 6th Corps, maintaining his position and inflicting very severe losses on the enemy. With this exception, the quiet of the lines remained undisturbed till 1 p.m. on the 3rd, when the enemy opened from 125 guns, playing upon our center and left. This cannonade continued for over two hours, when our guns in obedience to my orders failing to make any reply, the enemy ceased firing, and soon his massing of infantry became visible, forming for an assault on our left and left center. The assault was made with great firmness, directed and principally against the point occupied by the 2nd Corps and was repelled with equal firmness by the troops of that Corps. Supported by Doubleday's Division and Standard's Brigades of the 1st Corps, during the assault both Major General Hancock commanding the left center and Brigadier General Gibbon commanding the 2nd Corps were severely wounded. This terminated the battle, the enemy retiring to his lines, leaving the field strewn with his dead and wounded and numerous prisoners in our hands. Buford's Division of Cavalry, after its arduous service at Gettysburg on the 1st, was on the 2nd sent to Westminster to refit and guard our trains. Kilpatrick's Division, that on the 29th and 30th and 1st had been successfully engaged with the enemy's cavalry, was on the 3rd sent on our extreme left on the Emmitsburg Road, where the good service was rendered in assaulting the enemy's line and occupying his attention. At the same time, General Gregg was engaged with the enemy on our extreme right, having passed across the Baltimore Pike and Bonnetown Road and boldly attacked the enemy's left and rear. Thank you so much for watching. Please share the video. Check out the Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon pages as well as the Teespring store. And I'll see you next week.